messed up, had some bad wiring in my house, and I didn't follow the last step in starting these inverters. I think that's it. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to explain a surge that I recently had on my home. Now I'll explain exactly what happened and what I think caused the surge. Now I'll, I'll be clear, I don't know exactly what caused the surge. I've got a few ideas, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, but let's uh, go ahead and jump into it. When I explain this surge that I had in my house in more detail, I don't want it to really scare anyone away. I only make money on this channel when you guys actually buy equipment using my affiliate links. So this is not helping my cause at all by posting this video but I think it, I need to say it because I want to be honest with you guys and I want you guys to install equipment and I don't want you to damage your house and it's totally preventable as I'll explain in this video. All right guys, so if you've been following my channel in the past, you noticed that I've been on a quest to take my house off grid by installing this solar power system on my main house electrical panel. So I started out with just a single inverter and a couple batteries just sitting on the ground and also uh, like six solar panels just sitting in my garden and a wire running across my grass. And I love that system. It saved me money on my power bill and then it also gave me some confidence that if the power went out, I could still power my house. So eventually I got sick of the solar wires running across my grass out into my garden. So I ended up digging a trench, connecting them properly into my house. And I also got some more solar panels. Now the first install video was about 10 months ago and I've loved the system, but I didn't just let it sit here. I've always been making changes to this and I've had zero problems with it up until a month ago. So here is what happened. So on this channel, I'm gonna plan on reviewing multiple different types of inverters, not just these. So what I did is I ended up turning the system off while I prepared to install the 12K PV. So right before I was gonna pull these off the wall, I decided, you know, I need to do one more test and test how loud these are so I can get some metrics and I can compare that to future inverters that, I was, that I'm gonna test. These inverters are connected to my main house electrical panel using a generator interlock kit. So in order to turn these on, I first need to shut off power to the entire house by shutting off the grid. Once I shut off the grid, I'm able to turn on my back feed breaker and then feed my entire house that way. And in order to do that, I first need to schedule with the tenant that I have downstairs. So I didn't want this to interrupt their day very much. So I'm just gonna do it really fast. Now to go back a couple months when I installed the second inverter, I thought it was gonna be kind of complicated because you have to designate one as the primary, one as the secondary, and then you have to add a communication cable between the two of them. And then you also need a distribution block to um, combine the output in, so there's one output that feeds over to your main electrical panel. And I was a little nervous about that and I actually made a video on installing that second inverter. I was careful to follow all the steps in the manual and everything just worked perfectly. And I, it ran my house for a couple few months and I was turning it on and off. And surprisingly, everything just went perfectly having two inverters. And I think that's where the problem was. I was getting too confident in starting two inverters in parallel. Yeah, these two inverters have a communication cable because when they're outputting power, they have to make sure they're in the exact same phase as it's feeding over into my house. And if not in phase, you've got bad power coming into your house. So fast forward a couple months when I had the damage event occur, I told my tenant I was gonna turn on the power real quick. So I turned the power off and I noticed I only had about a thousand watts so I went ahead and just turned on my house. And I looked at the house and I noticed there was some flickering in my garage and I had never seen that before. So I went inside and I looked at the Christmas tree and the Christmas tree was flickering as well slightly. Now I should have turned, I would have turned off power right away, but I didn't because I didn't want to reschedule with the tenant downstairs. I uh, thought it was going to you know, level out and, but it just kept, it kept going a little bit longer. I came out here to the garage. That's when I noticed, uh, I think my transformer in my Rayobi battery charger was smoking and I smelt smoke. That's when I shut everything off right away. So I'm not sure how long it was on. I think it was probably maybe less than a minute and that was enough to cause the damage. So in the manual it mentions add, add some small loads and verify 
power output. I should have done that and that would have prevented the problem. And then once you verify that you've got good power output, you can go ahead and start the system. So I'm not sure totally what happened. I think my inverters, the settings are supposed to be saved when you shut them off and you start them back up. So I'm not sure exactly what happened. Um, I can't remember the exact process I followed to start the inverters. I'll be honest, and I wish I knew that, but I think that's really what caused the problem. They must not have been in phase when they were powering my house. So that's one thing that could have been the issue. The other thing that could have been the issue was uh, uh, ground neutral bonding. Now I did a full assessment of my electrical panel. I pulled this whole system off and I looked at my entire house electrical system and I've got another video here. And I found out that I had a ground neutral bond multiple ground neutral bonds. And I think the one that was causing problems was a ground neutral bond in my sub panel that I have in my basement. Now what happened was someone who installed that panel had tightened the wire clamp too much and it was piercing the side of the insulation on my neutral. So my neutral was touching or being bonded to my ground and causing a parallel return path for my power. So that could have been also the issue. Now I'm thinking that probably wasn't the issue though, mainly because I had been running the system so much for 10 months before and I had no problems at all. Now there is the possibility that I, I do work on that panel down there sometimes. Maybe I, was, maybe I jostled the panel or I jostled the wires just enough to cause the connection, which in turn caused the problem. Now I was speaking to my electrician and he said multiple ground neutral bonds are actually pretty common. Now, if that's the case, tons of these inverters would be damaging household appliances. And I've looked online, I've looked on the internet, on YouTube, it's really hard to find examples of these inverters or high frequency inverters in general damaging household appliances and equipment. Now, theoretically it is possible, but it's just really hard to find any examples online of that actually happening. Now, these inverters aren't perfect. I th that's why I think they have a five-year warranty so they do go bad once in a while, but they're not actually damaging people's equipment when they go bad. I think it was really related to having two inverters in parallel and starting them up. So I think in the future, I'm going to more recommend just getting a larger inverter instead of multiple smaller inverters. Now, the mo if you have multiple smaller inverters, it's nice because if one goes bad, you have redundancy there, so you'll still have power. But at the same time, having two different inverters doubles your chances of having something go wrong and having you to work on your equipment. I think I'd rather prefer to have one uh, better inverter, like an inverter with like a 10 year warranty that has a higher output. And having only one inverter greatly reduces the number of wire connections, reducing the chance to screw something up. Let me know in the comments what you prefer. So yeah, turn the power on slowly. This system is up and running and it's working perfect again. So if you wanna see my home electrical analysis that I did and things that I fixed, check out this video here, but we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.